Hi Floss Tube. My name is Shelly and welcome to my channel, Oh My Ada. Today is Thursday, January 7th, 2021. And this is my Floss Tube number 21. I would like to thank all my subscribers that have come back. And I would also like to thank all of my new subscribers. I'm not yet at 100, but I saw a steep increase in the last two months. So thank you for stopping by, and I hope you uh, like the content of my videos. Happy New Year! Just when we were so excited about 2021, it seems like this year has some surprises up its sleeve as well. I um, spent Tuesday and Wednesday grading to get grades done. And when I turned off the computer and I sat back to relax, I saw everything that was happening in Washington, D.C. And it just, it really saddens me. It does. So I'm not going to go into it any more than that. But thank you for coming. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for spreading the word. And in the last month, I've taken my channel, well, two months, I've decided to start doing some updates and making my floss tube a more regular occurrence. And one of the items I took into account was the color of my orange wall. And as you can see, it is now a gray. I've also bought a light ring to add light to make sure that you're getting a more accurate color description of the fabrics that I'm showing. And I'm also uploading a couple times a month and then having the video ready and updated on the 16th on Floss Tube. So I'm, I'm going to be adding some more to my Gloss Tube channel, but that's what I've been working on so far. Let's start with Dark 13 Stitches, because when I uploaded in December, I started uploading on the 12th, because for some reason, I get really lousy Wi-Fi in my house. And it could be where I'm located because there are huge buildings around me and I get no direct sunlight. And I think that might have some, uh, some say in it, but I, I, I work with what I have. And um, my Dark 13 project is Poison Apple by... Sapphire Mountain Crafts. I have the pattern. And I'm stitching this one in hand. I've only worked on it for, um, I believe, four days. If I look at my chart, no. I've only worked on this for three days. And I know that because I can look at the S Word Design Project Tracker to see that. I'm enjoying this, and I've always worked on projects when I enjoy it until the finish. But what I realized with this project is, although I put it away, when it was time to take it out again, I was really excited to get back to it. So I think I'm going to force myself to... Um, put them on a rotation just to see if or how much I like it when it comes back around. And I think that's going to work for me. So this is from Sapphire Mountain um, Handcrafts. Yeah, Handcrafts. And that leads into my start. And Let's do a sow. I was talking to Michelle Bindi, and she did an interview with 
Kristen Ashley on the Mania, the talk show. And they were talking about the releases for next year. I'm most excited about a childhood book I enjoyed uh, by C.S. Lewis, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And um, Kristen reached out and they've allowed her to create enough patterns for 600 people. And that's it. So that's exciting. But Michelle Bindi Stitchy said to me, let, um, actually she didn't. I was watching her show, her Saturday update, and she was talking about starting a sow with Shelly. But oddly, there are a lot of Shelleys that like cross stitch. And what I found is when she was talking about Shelly, I'm like, oh, okay, that's not me, but I'm still going to do it. Um, and then the next, I, I sent her a message and I said, hey, here's a site where you can hear, listen to um, The Secret Garden for free. I'm listening to it right now. And she asked, that's when she asked, she said, oh, are you ready for this out? Do you have all the, the material? And I said, oh, no, but I will get it and I'll be ready tomorrow. And so Michelle Bindi and I are working, I'm are working on the secret garden because we missed it the first time. And anyone is welcome to stitch it with us. The more the merrier. And uh, I'm loving this stitch. So the hashtag I will put on the screen somewhere down here. The hashtag is Secret Garden 2 S A L. And of course, the more the merrier. We'd love for you to join us and the other Shelly. Because what Michelle Bindi realized is she was setting up this out with another person, another Shelly. But then she, um, she was doing it with me. So I just messaged her and laughed a little bit. And I said, you know, I'm glad you figured that one out because I was going crazy trying to remember when we'd agreed to this out. But when Michelle Bindi calls you up for a sow, don't say no. You can see the hinge barely. And that's what I love about this fabric because it's a secret garden and the door is hard to find. And Mary, our protagonist, spends a while looking for it and finally finds the key. And I'm to the part when her uncle leaves again and she wants a piece of land. And he tells her he can, she can have some land, just tell uh, the workers what she wants. And she wants the secret garden, and she wants to add life to it again and bring it back to life. So that is the Stitching Book Club Secret Garden 2 Sal with Michelle Bindi and Oh My Ada and another Shelly. I haven't found out who the other Shelly is, uh, but I'll let you know. And if I know before I edit this and send it away, I'll put that down here. But it's by Sa Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts, Christine Ashley. She did this and the poison apple that I showed you just before. And I have other patterns of hers in my cart. So a great way to um, get into a new start and stitch with other people. Another way to get involved is through challenges. And I don't do a lot of challenges. I'm in one group, which is the Magazine Monthly Cross Stitch Challenge. And that's run by Carolyn Zook and Robin, Bur Robin Hall Bird Eye Stitcher. And then the other group I'm involved with where I actually do 
um, or will do the activities is Jessie Marie and Whipco. Jesse Marie did do a specific video on what Whipco is, and I will put it down in the uh, links for you. But I had three numbers called because I thought, oh, I have enough time to wait until the free space is called. It's never called first, and the free space was called. The good thing about the, the Whipco is it's a year-long challenge, and if I don't finish it this month, it doesn't go out of, out of order. I can take it and finish it in the next couple months as well. So my, my first number that was called is number eight. And this is Coffee Break. It looks different than what I stitched last time. I will put a picture up above. But the reason I'm showing you this is in December, I pulled it out and I finished Mocha. And then the top one right here, the one below it, as well as almost finishing the one below that. And for me, my whip go challenge was to finish one and a half blocks. So as I finish, what, what I want to do is maybe finish this one and then start the bottom one right here. And then I'll have all the coffee cups on the chart ready to go. And then all I will have to do is fill in the background and backstitch. And that's not a big deal. I like this pattern and where I'm at because the, the fill-in color is mindless. And when I'm working, I get really tired. And being able to fill in a color is actually quite helpful to me because I don't have to count. But I can still cross-stitch. The next number that was called is free spot, and that's number 13. And in that box, I had written a mini hard, hardinger start and finish because I saw in just cross stitch, they had six, well, they had in six magazines, six bands as a sampler, and they gave a mini with each band. And so I was going to choose one of those bands to do. And I was talking to Carolyn Zook, and she said that next month, and that would be February, that the monthly magazine cross-stitch challenge group may or may not have a Hardanger um, challenge. So that is number 13. And since it's a year-long project. I don't mind waiting next month to see what may or may not be the challenge in that group. And then number 18 that was called is my Linen and Threads Quaker. As you can see, I stopped somewhere in July. And, and as I told you last time, the reason I did that is I know some of my counts are off. And Brandon, the person that puts out the pattern, was jumping around. Um, let's do this. Was jumping around in this part of the pattern, and it wasn't sequential. And it, and my biggest fear was that I would mess up and the edges would be off. And that's why I stopped. But now that the pattern is done, or the... Yeah, the pattern is done and it's been released. I can go through and I'm going to use Sulky. And I'm going to, on the Sulky, I'm just going to stitch a running stitch around the edge so that I make sure I am 
in line with all the patterns and with all the months. So yes, I knew I stopped, but I also knew I planned to pick this one back up. And my goal for this when it was called is one and a half months. And I can do that no problem. So before I put this away tonight, I'm actually going to take the sulky and do a running stitch to outline where the edges should be. Wow. So those are the only things I've been um, stitching. But I do have some finishes. This bag, you can see my um, the blue on one side and then the sewing machines and accoutrement on the back. I did make this bag and this houses my secret garden. And I made this bag for the magazine monthly challenge giveaway. There we go. And I didn't like this at first, but I actually love the pink and the blues together. That's for February. And then as usual, I, I think I told you I was making a bag specifically for Steph of Just Keep Stitching. Um, she talked about one of her bucket lists being riding in a hot air balloon. And I actually had a bucket list item that was similar. I wanted to go to the Albuquerque hot air balloon fiesta. And I did that in 2019. And when I was there, I picked up some fabric at this cute little fabric shop, Hip Stitch. And I bought more fabric than I should have because there's this tiny little shop across the street from a huge Joann's. And I just wanted to send money to the little guy. And the great thing about it is I asked her if I wanted any of the fabric. Would she ship it? And she said, sure, just call. Let me know what you want. I'll cut it and ship it to you. And so because I had the extra fabric, I went ahead and made two hot air balloon pouches. And I bought this because it represents the New Mexico sky. And so I'm going to send one to Stephanie. And of course, I'm keeping one for myself. I bought a lot, uh, um, a lot of yardage so that I could make project bags. And then uh, I didn't plan to make a bag for Pam, but I had this fabric in the back. I had this at home. And when I was looking at fabric, I saw this We the People fabric, and I thought the two would go well together and Pam would like it. So that's why I went ahead and did I did make Pam a bag as well. The only thing I have left to do with the other bags is add um, zipper pulls to them. And I do that with beads because I used to bead jewelry. And so I have so many beads, it's ridiculous. And I need something to use them on. So putting them as zipper pulls is a really good idea that works for me. So those are my finishes. Now I have purchases. And I was really excited to order the winter solstice box from Be Stitch Me. And she has fabulous fabrics. I think most of you, if you watch any YouTube at all, You'll have seen this great bag. It, I'm going to use this probably more for knitting than cross stitch. And it came with, I mean, don't get me wrong, I did buy, the, buy it or purchase it. But it came with five fabrics. 
if you ordered before a certain deadline, it would have I would have received one more fabric. So I am showing them to you not because you haven't seen them, but because what happens is everybody gets a different um, different dye lot. So I have these two. They're both 36 count linen. I love them both. The blue is black ice and the modeled one is Aurora. I'm looking forward to trying the 36 count from Be Stitch Me. I am using 40 count on the Secret Garden Book Club. Um, so that's, um, I like the 40 count. I never thought I would, but actually I love it. Okay, so this is Ledger. This is Winter Solstice right here. And this is Ledger right here. It's sort of a yellow. The solstice, the Winter Solstice is coming out. I don't think you can see the brilliance of this one though. No. And then one more is Baron. Oops. And again, these are all 36 count linen from the Stitch Me. And wow, that looks let me look, because that Ooh. Hmm. Baron is a very dark fabric, and there's nothing wrong with that for if you have the right floss. So I'm looking forward to stitching on this. That'll be fun. This year I do belong, or I did stay with the Be Stitch Me Fabric of the Month Club. But what I did do with that is I switched from 22 count to 32 count because I'm in another fabric club that I've ordered 36. So I want to build up my 32 and I have a 36. And if I get into a color in cotton, I don't know. I may do 32 or I may do 40. And I love all of them. All of them. The last, the last, um, the last cross stitch that I did or purchased for is Al Forest Embroidery. This is their coffee sampler. And what I've decided to do is for my birthday sal is always make sure I have a coffee sampler going. So you did see coffee break that I put up earlier. That was my 2019 Java 365 sal. This will be my next coffee sal, but I'm going to keep the hashtag Java365 Sal. There, as long as I plan to keep the, um, the theme going, there's no reason to change the hashtag. And then I got this autumn sampler, which is just gorgeous. The sampler that I kept going for, the box set that I really wanted, was Queen of Hearts and I this one came up about a month before I ordered and had I not seen this I would have purchased the Queen of Heart box set but what I'm going to do is stitch these and if I still like the pattern then I will get the Queen of Hearts as well and I wanted to try their, their threads and the colors for both projects are very similar as you can see, but they're my colors. They're gorgeous. 
All right, I do have some uh, knitting that I purchased, but I think I'm going to show that to you at my during my next update, which will be soon because I need to start uploading by January 13th or 14th. And so in about a week, I'll come back and show that to you. What I did the other morning was I unboxed my Rolla frame. I did film that process and I put my fabric on the frame for Mad Hat. And I showed you that pattern last time. I bought it from Etsy. And it was going to be my New Year start. But as you know, my New Year start changed. And I'm completely okay with that. And so I will find time to, I will find time to start that. Let me see if I can bring the Mad Hat up. I've been calling it Mad Hatter, but it's not. It's just the Mad Hat. I love the pattern. It's going to take forever. And it doesn't look like I'll be able to get this up quickly. I wonder if you know why the Mad Hatter was considered crazy. I know the story and I'll tell you next time I talk about the pattern, but do you know what made the Mad Hatter crazy? It's not like the Johnny Depp movie version. There's a reason why Adders became mad. Right. Uh, I'll talk to you again soon.